Thank you, John. Um, as you said, my name is Lauren Dreyfus, and I would like to present my project, Let's Go Nuts, a suitability analysis of walnut cultivation on Mount McKeon, Arcadia, Greece. OK, just so we all know where we're going, um, here's the outline for this evening. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Parazin Heritage Park, just so we all know where we are in the world. Uh, a little bit about the landscape profile within the Parazin Heritage Park, or at least the part that I'm going to talk about around Mount McCann. Walnut cultivation, of course. Uh, the environmental factors that went into my suitability analysis. The accessibility factors that went into my uh, suitability analysis. And then, of course, the reclassification and raster addition that I did to get my results. Then, of course, I'll talk about any conclusions, and hopefully we'll have time for questions as well. So um, just to talk a little bit about the Parazian Heritage Park, it's an ongoing initiative of the Mount McCann uh, Survey and Excavation Project, uh, which has been an archaeological excavation and survey um, in the area for a very long time. Uh, it's Anytime you do archaeology in Greece, uh, you do it in concert with the Greek Archaeological Service. And the part of that Greek Archaeological Service that we uh, work with is the 39th Ephraim of Antiquities. And again, you always do archaeology in Greece under the auspices of the American School of Classical Studies at Athens as well. So this Parazian Heritage Park is part a part of this, of the Mount Lycaon uh, survey and excavation. Uh, it's directed by Dr. Gil David Gilman Romano, who's in the back today. If you have any questions about the park, I'm sure he'll be happy to answer them for you. Uh, and every summer since 2010, they've had a Parazian Heritage Park field school, which I was lucky enough to be a part of this, uh, this last summer. Um, because the Mount Lycaon survey and excavation is such a big part of the park, uh, it's really served as a catalyst area for uh, ways to look for improving the park. Um, we use that as an example for how other areas of the park could be uh, improved, could be developed, could be uh, used. So here is the Parazian Heritage Park. Uh, you can see it's in the western part of the southern part of Greece called the Peloponnese. Uh, it lies kind of at the border of these three Greek uh, regional districts, Elis, Messenia, and Arcadia. And in antiquity, this region was known as Parasia, hence the Parasian Heritage Park. Uh, you can see it's very mountainous. Um, there are two major rivers, the Alpheus River that flows through the eastern part of the park and the Nether River, which flows west out of it. And the Nether River Gorge um, is beautiful. I've talked a little bit about the archaeological uh, impetus for the park. There's also a beautiful ecological impetus for it as well. It's, the Nether River Gorge is one of the most beautiful places you could ever visit. If you ever go to Greece, go. It's wonderful. Um, so that's kind of where we are situated in the world. There it is. Um, and to kind of get back to the idea of a heritage park, what exactly is a heritage park and how is it different than a regular park? Um, this kind of gets at it. The goal of the proposed Parazian Heritage Park is to sustain an area of cultural significance, outstanding natural beauty, and rich archaeological sites, while encouraging local communities to continue living and working within the protected landscape. And this is how a heritage park is a little different than your average park, right? People still live in it. They still use the landscape. They still interact with the landscape in uh, and we don't want to stop that, right? Which gets to the second part of the mission statement. This living park mission objective encourages natural, cultural, and scenic resources to be managed for both long-term vitality and use as an essential part of local livelihoods and traditions. And this is really where my project came from. Uh, I wanted to see if I could find a way to encourage the livelihoods and traditions in the area um, while providing an economic opportunity for the people who live within it. Uh, I think we're all probably pretty familiar with the economic situation in Greece. Uh, just to kind of give you an example of how that's hitting the Parasian Heritage Park, here are all 92 of the settlement areas or the settlements within the Parasian Heritage Park. Uh, only, fifth, or only seven of them have a year-long residence of over 50 people. Um, so the area is becoming depopulated. Now, there could be several reasons why that is, but we'd like to see that stop, right? It's a wonderful um, cultural area. Um, it has a lot of beautiful traditions. And how was I going to find a way to sort of encourage that while keeping those traditions alive? Right? And the answer, of course, as you might have guessed, was walnuts. Uh, like I said, Mount Lacan was a catalyst for the air, uh, is a catalyst area. Walnuts are grown on the slopes of Mount Lacan. They're traditionally grown for at least three, uh, three generations back. And it turns out that at the festival of the prophet Elijah, who you can see here, um, walnut liqueur and candies are served um, in the at the local gathering. Uh, there's probably not a religious reason for this. It probably just has to do with timing. But I thought, aha, 
here's a way that we can provide the, the people living around Mount Lacan with an economic opportunity that draws on their local traditions rather than changes them in any way. But of course, um, if you're going to have a value-added product at the end of the day, you need to have more walnuts. So I thought, well, maybe I can look at walnut cultivation around Mount Lacan, since it's our catalyst area, and use those parameters to identify areas where other, or other areas where walnuts could be cultivated still within the park. There we go. Uh, I've talked a lot about Mount Lacan. You still haven't seen where it is yet. Uh, here it is. Uh, you can see it's situated right here on the border between Mycenae and Arcadia in this very mountainous region. And you can probably guess just by looking at this map that this region is a little different than this region, even though they're still within the same area of the park. Uh, what this region looks like, this very mountainous region, it's characterized by hilly hummocks um, that are often have like large uh, limestone outcroppings on them, uh, dirt roads, and in between these hilly hummocks are these agricultural terraces. It's a very mountainous region, as I said before, and the agricultural terraces really uh, form the backbone of agriculture within the area. And if you want to see what these, what this actually looks like, rather than this drawing. Um, here are actual walnuts being grown on a terrace in Greece. This is the northern slope of Mount Lacan, looking roughly northwest. I mean, you can see the little walls that define the terrace. You can see over here on this hillside that there are other terraces around. You can also just get a feeling for how mountainous the region is. So these agricultural terraces are pretty important uh, to agriculture. Um, not all of them are sort of gently sloping like this. Many of them are very broad um, and shallow. They can also be very sort of narrow and windy down. You can see here it kind of opens up. Um, this just kind of gives you a, an idea of what the landscape looks like and how important the agricultural terraces are. So what I proposed to do was look at those wall, or look at terraces within a one kilometer buffer of Mount Lacan itself, here's the peak, and see where walnuts were growing. If walnuts were growing there, awesome. If they were not, I didn't take a point. Uh, I took a point where all the walnut, where walnuts were growing. Um, the data was collected with a handheld GPS uh, uh, in WGS, WSG 1984. And as you can see, there's only a few walnut, uh, only a few terraces that were actively being used in, uh, for walnut cultivation. But within these terraces, there were very healthy walnuts. So I thought, well, this isn't a large sample, but it's clearly a good sample because these walnuts are very, they, they appear very happy. Uh, so uh, alongside with that, I had to digitize the terraces um, from Google Earth. The terraces are very clearly visible uh, on Google Earth. And then everything was projected into UTM zone 34N. So I clearly couldn't uh, project all of, the, all of my walnut parameters onto the entire park. It's over 600 square kilometers. It's about 660 square kilometers. So what I, did, what I decided to do was look at the area within Arcadia that was above 500 meters. Uh, and that would give me a study area that was manageable, that was uh, sort of ecologically and landscape sort of unified, and it would be, uh, that, would be my, that would become my study area. So on to my suitability analysis. What were the environmental factors that I could look at? I looked at elevation, of course, aspect, slope. And then there were accessibility factors as well. I looked at elevate, or I'm sorry, I looked at cost distance from roads, being of course the farther away you get from a road, the harder it is to get somewhere. Being that this was a very mountainous region, I also used slope as a parameter. Uh, and you can see the, uh, the resulting cost distance surface there. I did the same thing with villages. Again, slope was used as a parameter. The farther away from a village, the harder it would be to get to some place. And then, of course, I had to reclassify all of these. Um, for the environmental factors, I took the numbers straight from the walnut terrace values. Since the, the highest uh, elevation that walnuts grew at in the terraces that I looked at were th was 1338 meters, that immediately became the lower, uh, or I'm sorry, the upper, uh, upper limit for my one reclassification. 1040 became the low. And anything outside of that was immediately reclassified as a zero. I did it again with uh, slope and again with aspect. And you can see what these look like. Um, for elevation, um, walnuts were actually growing in a pretty narrow range of, uh, of elevation. So we get blue being better, 
brown being worse. Luckily for me, they grow at tons of different aspects. Apparently, they don't just like southerly slopes. They like everywhere. Uh, only the most northerly slopes were uh, reclassified as worse. Um, the same thing was true of slope. Only the most shallow or the most flat and the most steep things were reclassified as zero. For the, uh, for the accessibility factors, I used mean to reclassify. And anything above the mean cost distance was reclassified as zero. It's harder than average to get there. People are probably not going to go there. Anything below the mean was reclassified as one. And so this actually gave me quite nice results as well. So uh, the roads, cost distance, you can see that we have quite a bit that's actually better. Um, not a lot that's worse. Wait for it. There it is. Uh, same thing with the village cost distance. Uh, quite a bit, nice large polygons that are better. Uh, nice large polygons that are worse. And then I added them all together, seeing as how plants are not an all or nothing organism. It's not as though if they have a slightly steeper slope than is suitable, they're going to just die, right? So I used raster addition to come up with these results. Uh, areas in green and blue represent the most suitable for walnut cultivation. The areas in the beige and the brown are, this, are uh, least suitable. And so these areas should be avoided. Lauren, you talked so much about the terraces earlier. What about the terraces? Don't worry. Um, I digitized the terraces for the entire area. And you can kind of visually just see that most of the terraces kind of fall in this blue, in these sort of blue patches here. Um, but who likes just doing visual analysis? We need to do some, get some numbers in there. 89.5% uh, of the terraces fall within these, uh, these blue-green ranges. And if we take out the three, we still get 61.5, there it is, 61.5% of the terraces fall on either a four or a five for suitability. And so to conclude, many of the areas suitable for walnut cultivation in the study, study area already have arable land uh, in which to grow them, which is great. Um, however, this was a really preliminary uh, study. There are so many other factors that can be taken into account here. Uh, I would love to go back and look at soil types and depths, because for a plant, that's a pretty big deal. Um, and I would also like to see what land stewardship has to do. Like I said, this is not a, a usual park in that the government just buys the land and then it has stewardship over it. People still own this land and they use it in different ways. And so um, that would be another sort of layer to add for future study. And finally, this, stu this study is a very small step in fulfilling the mission statement for the Prosian Heritage Park. Clearly a value-added product of like walnut liqueur and candies is a long way off, but hopefully this is at least a small start that we can make.